So according to me, there are three fundamental issues with the business of TCS as of now. Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by talking about the reality of the stock markets as of now. It has become a game of snake and ladder. Every time you make a little bit of profit, feds come in, central banks come in and they increase the interest rate and all your profits go away. It's a scary situation. So of course, this leaves you with two options. One, you will say that, hey, stock market's very risky right now, very volatile. I'm not going to invest. Please don't do that simply because of the fact that the inflation is so high that if you stop investing for the next seven years, 40% of your wealth will go away. That is what the study tells us. Second and more sensible option that you start identifying assets that are coming down to sensible valuations. You start taking some positions in it. In the short term, you might still suffer some notional losses, but this is the only way of making money in the stock market in the long term. This is precisely what even smart investors like Mr. Warren Buffett are also doing. He has started buying equities in bulk. So he has recently started purchasing Apple stocks. If you want, I will make a separate video on that. So on today's this video, I am going to discuss three specific tech monopoly stocks, both in India and the US. These stocks have fallen a lot. It might appear that it is a great time to enter this stock. So that is the precise conversation that we are going to have today. So should we be entering? Should we not be entering? So I am going to do a technical and fundamental analysis of these stocks. So let us get the discussion started and let us first and foremost talk about Netflix because the stock has come down by roughly 70% from its top. This is no joke. Netflix is a major stock when it comes to the OTT platforms. It's one of the most loved platforms, so to say. People also enjoy watching shows like Squid Games and I don't know, probably watch movies like Twilight or something. But yeah, bottom line is that it's a very loved platform. And it has fallen by roughly 70%. So I'm getting a lot of messages. Should we go ahead and buy this stock? Okay, so let us do a very quick analysis on that. So Netflix has approximately lost 70% of its value. And there are a series of reasons that are being outlined for the same. So let me bifurcate apparent reasons from non-apparent reasons. And you should be more considerate about non-apparent reasons. So let us first talk about the obvious reasons here. So, so first and foremost, people are saying that Net so Netflix has recently lost 200,000 subscribers. This is true. Is it really a worrisome sign? The answer is no, because Netflix has approximately 220 million subscribers, out of which if 200,000 subscribers go away, it's not end of the world for something like Netflix, which is good news. Second reason for the fall that people are pointing to is that Netflix password sharing problem has gone haywire and people have been sharing passwords with each other. And that is the same problem that was there in Russia and Netflix lost a lot of business. Okay, we have been doing it for years. When I say we, please don't include me in it. I can't say yes or no to it on public platform. Otherwise, Netflix might sue me. But I hope you get the picture. In India, people have been doing it for years now. It doesn't matter. So these are general, general things that you might be witnessing about Netflix. And honestly, this is not a good reason not to invest in Netflix. But am I going to invest in Netflix? The answer is no. And it has got nothing to do with these two factors that I currently outline. Now I will help you understand the real story as to why buying Netflix stock even now is still problematic despite a 70% fall in the stock price. So first and foremost, you need to understand the fact that Netflix actually undertakes a lot of expense in terms of producing content. Now, this is something which is completely opposite to YouTube. So let us quickly compare the business model of both these firms from a content generation perspective. Now, this is the production spent or the content generation spent of Netflix. You can see that every year this number keeps on going up up and up. This is crazy and this keeps on going up and there is no economies of scale. Now, what do I mean by economies of scale here? For example, if Netflix recently produced, it undertook a lot of expense in terms of content generation for it. Now, if let's assume it creates like a Bhojpuri version of Squid Games, like Peter Bater games or whatever, it will still have to undertake a lot of expense in terms of producing that content. Netflix or any content platform has not been able to figure out what type of content will work versus not. So they need to run a series of experiments in terms of producing that content, figuring out the product market fit. And there is never an economies of scale that is generated in terms of content. Now, unfortunately for Netflix, it is in a model where it first has to generate content and people get attracted to that content and join the platform. So it's a content led play. On the flip side, if you compare it to the business model of YouTube, the content that is generated for YouTube, it's free. 
YouTube does not pay content creators to generate content, almost to none of them or to a very small percentage of them. So this content generation game for Netflix is very, very costly affair and it keeps on going up and up and up because it keeps on getting harder and harder to keep on creating curious and intriguing content for users that they will come to pay and watch. Now you might say that Akshat, you know what, then from that example, even Disney might be a bad play. Yes, you might be right, but here is the difference between Disney and Netflix. Now here is the revenue streams of Disney. Disney makes, and here is a split for you. It makes a lot of money from park experiences, products, media and entertainment, linear networks, direct to consumers, and a series of different, different areas and angles. So its revenue streams are extremely diversified. How does Netflix make money? Just by selling you membership and even that you share it with your friends further. So you are hurting Netflix's revenue there. So the point that I'm trying to tell you is that the second biggest problem in Netflix's business model is that it is not a diversified business. I had made a video earlier comparing Disney and Netflix and I categorically said that if I were to invest, I will invest in Disney over Netflix. And this was one of the reasons why. That going forward, as the markets evolve, as more and more creator economy shapes up, NFT economy shape up, something like Disney is much well equipped in terms of leveraging that market and making more money from it. Netflix, unfortunately, is not at that stage because it mostly releases a series of shows, etc., which can't be turned into a brand value game. But on the flip side, something like Disney, which owns a series of mascots, a series of brands, for example, Mickey, Donald Duck, etc., etc., they can turn them into licensing and digital assets. So because Netflix can only depend on one source of income, so they have to maximize it. So these are the membership plans of several OTT platforms in US and Canada, and you can clearly see that Netflix comes out literally at the top, which is not a great sign. As you increase the price, you push people to share their passwords and what, and it becomes like a problem to compete with other brands. So now comes the third point, which is the increased competition. And this graph indicates this entire aspect beautifully. So this shows the comparison of Netflix versus Disney. That Netflix started in 2012 and Disney Hotstar started in 2020. And within a year, year and a half of launch, Disney Hotstar reached at approximately 100 100 million subscriber base and Netflix in total was only able to reach around 210 million subscriber base. This categorically shows that the competition in the OTT space is heating up quite aggressively and unfortunately Netflix seems to be losing that race. So to cut the long story short, will I be investing in Netflix? The answer is no because the business model itself looks very dicey. It is not clear how they are going to win in this competition. Stock price might fall further, it might rise further, but to be honest, I don't see something like Netflix competing quite aggressively 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line with something like Disney or other OTT platforms that are out. So with that said, let us move to an Indian monopoly stock or one of India's largest tech companies, which is Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. And let's analyze that stock. So if you take a look at the technical indicators for TCS, you will see that the stock has fallen from its peak by roughly 15%. This is not a small fall for a stock like TCS because TCS is not a front end tech. It it is not like Amazon. It is not like Google. It does not have the same growth rate compared to these companies. So 15% fall for a company like TCS is a big fall. That is point one. And that is the reason why people are saying that, you know what, probably a great time to buy TCS because the stock price has fallen and it might not fall further. So let us analyze that viewpoint as to why the stock has fallen in the first place. And there are a few reasons that have been given. First and foremost, take a look at this particular chart. It categorically shows the growth rate of the company, which is not very encouraging. It puts three year sales growth at roughly 9%, five years at 10%. For a tech company or a semi-tech company, these are not good growth rates per se. This is point or problem number one. Second key reason for the fall of TCS has been that there has been a broad based correction for tech stocks in the US. Now US is predominantly a tech driven market. Tech stocks there have fallen. Entire US stock market has fallen quite aggressively. And as a result, tech stocks all across the globe, including in India, something like TCS, Wipro, etc. have also fallen. So this is the second reason for the fall and a very apparent reason for the fall. Third and final reason that people are saying why TCS stock has fallen is that, hey, there is like manpower issue and there is like profit margin preservation issue that going forward, TCS will have a hard time in terms of preserving its margin.
Now this has been outlined in the form of high iteration through this article. These are all valid reasons and these are some concerning reasons as well. So if we look deeper and if we try to uncover the story behind the curtains, what is it that we can figure out? So according to me, there are three fundamental issues with the business of TCS as of now. So first and foremost, there is very high iteration problem that we are witnessing. A company like Infosys is witnessing approximately 27% iteration rate. This is one of the highest that it has ever witnessed. Other IT companies are also witnessing super high iteration rate. And this is a major cause of concern for businesses like TCS. Why? Because TCS is not in tech business fundamentally speaking. It is, according to me, in a manpower management business. What they simply do is that they will pick up engineering graduates from tier 2, tier 3 colleges, sometimes tier 1 colleges also, pay them a basic package, make them do slightly higher order work and turn like civil engineers into computer science engineers and mechanical engineers into computer science engineers. Bottom line is that this model worked really well up to a point. But now with better opportunities in the market, with more startups coming up, they are scouting for talent. There is a talent war going on there. Startups are paying more money. So a lot of engineers, after getting their basic training at TCS, they leave the jobs for better opportunities in terms of higher perks and higher salaries. Now the problem with companies like TCS is that this tier two, tier three pool is switching to startups and other jobs that are paying them better. So the option for TCS is that either to pay them higher salaries if they do that, then the profit margins get crushed. Second is that they go and hire better people and try to get more work out of them. But unfortunately, the IT companies in India have built their brand positioning in such a way that they are unable to recruit top talent in this space. So this is a talent war that is going on with companies like TCS, Wipro, etc. And new age startups that are willing to pay higher salaries in order to attract trained talent. The second key problem that a company like TCS is facing is in terms of executing projects. Take a look at this particular chart. It categorically shows that customers in the US or Europe, they want holistic solutions. They don't need very rudimentary solutions anymore. That model has been done away with. So customers expect cloud-oriented solutions, cybersecurity solutions, and a range of integrated solutions. And TCS will have to amp up its game. This is not only relevant to a company like TCS, but this is relevant for almost all the IT companies that they have to offer a series of suits in terms of executing these type of complex projects. Can they alter their business models? I don't know, but the existing business model, it definitely needs to get altered. Now comes the third and final problem with a company like TCS. This problem is very funny. It is called as moonlighting problem. And what it simply means is that there are employees at these IT companies who work with these different clients. They build relationship with those clients and then they end up becoming freelancers and taking business away from companies like TCS and Wipro. I'm laughing a little bit, but this is like a very complex problem for companies like Wipro and TCS to solve because with the growth of freelancer economies, this problem of freelancing is only going to go up from this point. And I will be very curious to see how companies like TCS can actually tackle this freelancing and moonlighting problem. Let me know what is your viewpoint on this moonlighting problem. Have you seen your colleagues doing it? Are you doing it? Don't use your real name in the comment section, but would love to hear your response on this. So is TCS at a great buying level? I'm personally not investing in it. But if you want to invest a little bit of money, it might not be a bad idea. Why? Because TCS is still a very sensible company. It still has a very clean management, good business model, good existing set of contracts, no fundamental problem at play per se. But from a slightly long term perspective, the business model looks a little bit shaky as far as I can see. So I'm not willing to put my money, but if you just want to buy the dip a little bit here and ride the wave for a little while, it might make sense. Now let's move on to the third stock, which I'm definitely going to buy and it is Amazon. Now, first and foremost, let me show you to what extent Amazon has fallen. So if you check from the top, Amazon has fallen by roughly 35%. Now, this is a big fall for a company like Amazon. Now, why has the stock price fallen? One primary reason for that was the loss of operating income and the operating income coming down. And a lot of banks have also revised their ratings on Amazon. So these are the list of new fresh prices issued by several series of banks. And this is what they are saying. The Deutsche Bank has cut down its target from 4,100 US dollar to 35. And bunch of other banks have also cut the target to approximately $3,500 range. This is not bad because right now Amazon stock price is trading at roughly $2,500. So there is a lot of gain to be made. So this is point one. This is an independent analysis done by a series of banks. Now let us delve deeper and try to see as to why Amazon has fallen. 
So first and foremost reason was that it invested in a company called as Rivian Automobiles and that company undertook insane amount of losses. Its stock price tanked from roughly $180 to $32. So Amazon undertook a lot of losses. I have been saying on my channel that please don't invest in EVs. I wish Jeff Bezos would have listened to my videos. Okay, this is just a joke. Don't take it too seriously. But yes, that was an EV company which kind of got wiped out and Amazon took a lot of hit due to that. Second key reason that if you check a lot of commentaries coming out that, hey, you know what, after COVID-19, people want to go out, they want to go out to malls, all this stuff. So Amazon is likely to suffer. And yes, in the short term, this makes sense that there will be change in customer sentiment and there will be short term pain because of that. And I think we have reached that stage and Amazon is taking a little bit of it due to that. Now, third and finally, and this is a more concrete reason that inflationary pressures on Amazon has gone up quite aggressively. If you take a look at this, that inflation related expenses in the form of higher wages in the form of supply chain issues has roughly increased 2 billion of incremental cost for Amazon. This is quite a big number. And as a result, Amazon stock price has come down. Okay, so let us now delve deeper that are these temporary problems or are these problems going to stay forever or are there any other fundamental issues with Amazon? So I will draw your attention to a couple of key financial terms here. So one is the operating income of Amazon. So here is a chart for you and it categorically shows the operating income from different revenue streams for Amazon. For example, if you take a look at the North America business, then till Q2 of 2021, it was doing well. But by Q1 of 2022, the North American business started turning negative. The operating income became negative. Same goes for international, but the AWS or Amazon Web Service, which is the cash cow or the most prominent business for Amazon, it has been doing phenomenally well and it has been going up in numbers. And there has been no downfall in AWS. US. So this is the first key thing that you must remember. The second key problem with Amazon has been that in the last two quarters, its free cash flow has been negative and people are panicking because of that. If you relate the graph one with graph two, what you will see is that this free cash flow has become negative because its core operations from its non AWS services. And as a result, the free cash flows have come down and have become negative. Now relate these two graphs to one of the snippets that I showed you earlier, which was related to high inflation. If you check high inflation, this inflationary problem is not forever going to be there. And when it comes to e-commerce business of Amazon, it is going to get hit the most due to high inflation. So as and when the inflation number dies down, the e-commerce business of Amazon will get picked up and the stock price is likely to move up from that point. So from a long term, this is what I see with Amazon happening. Number one, the AWS business of Amazon will continue to do really well. It is already doing fairly well. As the inflation problem dies out, it has to die out at some stage. Even the e-commerce business will become positive again. Three, company as a whole is growing. There has been no issues with the company's growth. It is a monopoly business and it will continue to thrive. So I'm going to aggregate more of my position in something like Amazon. It is given the more it falls, the more I'm going to buy. Important point to note is that please don't put all your money in Amazon in one go just because it is at good buying levels as of now. Don't do that because there can be a short term pain, especially due to inflation, due to which something like Amazon can also suffer. Please don't invest all your money in one go, but you could consider taking maybe 20-30% position in such a company. It is a great business and it is likely to give good returns going forward in the future. This is not a buying recommendation. Take my inputs as just one data point and do your further analysis. But just to cut the long story short, right now we are in a very interesting stage of the market that a lot of good stocks are available at discounts. If you want, I'll make a part two of this video. Let's hit the target of 15,000 likes on this video. Then I will release part two, especially with Apple stock. And then we will do further analysis of it. But for the time being, remember the point that a lot of good stocks are available in the market at discounted rates. It does not mean that they will not go down further in the short term. They very well might given the volatility in the market. But in the long term, good business models are going to win. Thank you so much for watching this video. Press the like button and I will see you tomorrow.